stories, which is the short box. A whole lot of news in just a little bit of time. Uh, X-Men does a future pass. Script leaked. Possible spoilers. This one was sent spoilers. to us through Facebook by Lily Hamilton. And I, re- I replied immediately with, no, 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 no. So you don't want to read any of this? I do not want to read any of it. There are... Sp- it has been leaked. The script, it includes who may or may not have died. Oh, really? I heard someone say something like that. So, yeah, no, don't want to. Can't, can't make me. So, you need to read this piece right here. Da, da, da. So, no. as Blink emerges in the no. room, Blink calls the gathered mutants. <laughs> Time's up. Suddenly, massive deep shockwaves echo from above, the script reveals. Dust falls. Something is coming. Something terrifying. That's enough of that crap. It didn't even say anybody died. Moving on! Wait, but it does show in a picture Quicksilver, which is really just not... It's not good. No, it's really not a good picture. Again, it's really not a good I picture have the complaint of, those two. of why is, Mag- or is uh, Professor X... Standing. They'll explain it. I hate Brian Singer. It happens in the comics all the time. It better be... No, you know what? He was in a fucking wheelchair. Next story. No. Seriously, next story. No. Not until you say Brian Singer sucks. No. No. Not doing it then. You can have the mouse and you can control stories. No, because it's on this table and that makes noise. Hand. Dude, just change nope. the fucking story. Nope. <laughs> Not changing it until you agree Brian Singer sucks because he should. The, uh, Professor X should have been in a wheelchair this entire movie. Oh my god! Say, fine, he should be in the wheelchair. That's not what I said to t- say. Brian Singer sucks. There you Would go. You t- god dang. There are children, and then there is my co-host. <laughs> uh, moving on to the next story from comicbookmovie.com. Uh, Vanity... Oh, update. Oh, God. No! Yeah. Va- Variety confirms that Johnny Depp is in early talks to play Doctor Strange. I will never watch this movie. No! For those of you doubting the report from Latino Review that Johnny Depp was being eyed by Marvel Studios for the role of Doctor Stephen Strange and Doctor... Strange, that was redundant. Variety has now confirmed that the Pirates of the Caribbean star is indeed in talks. Can we? Can somebody please go find no. that website? No. That t- hang on. That find the website where you do petitions, <laughs> and I would like to start a petition that this never happen. Okay, because as much as I like Johnny Depp, he is on a horrible, horrible downward slide. Yes, and I do not think this will work. Yes. I mean, seriously, what's the last good movie he made? Like, the first Pirates. I mean, seriously. And those of you that are saying yes in the chat can no! I just... No. I can't do it. According to Variety, Johnny Depp is indeed in early discussions with Marvel Studios to play Doctor Strange in their planned solo movie. Wait, 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 wait. There's another update. Go down. It says or not. I, I get it. I'm in it. Uh, this confirms Variety's report, or yesterday's report from Latino Review, although the trait emphasized, emphasis that discussion with the actor are early at this point. All right, so according to Marvel, there are no meetings nor talks taking place between the company and Depp, and this no was talks on for Doctor January Strange. January 14th. This is some kind of update from Boris Kitt. All right. Variety has already slid back their early talk story. Oh, okay, thank God. <sighs> We, we dodged a bullet there. Yeah, we should probably have read that story. Johnny, first. if you're listening to this... We love you. I really do love you. But don't fuck this character up for me. I'm just saying. He is kind of one of my favorites. <laughs> Alright? I think somebody like Jim Caviezel, which I've argued... We have argued that for two years. Right, I've said no. But the fact that somebody said Johnny Depp yes, now Jim Caviezel is starting to look like a solid idea. And he's got TV time now. He does have TV time. So I'm just saying. No. No. All right, moving on. No. So, yeah. Any, by the way, any of these stories that you'd like to uh, read more than what we've done, please go take a look at the links down below or in the um, forums. 
Do you yes. remember the form? Nerd of the noob dot nice boards dot com. Ah, oh, you got it. Um, Liam Neeson for Doctor Strange. Then it just becomes him hunting someone. Baron Strucker uh, is looking to be in something. Come on, from coming soon dot net. So much to load. Uh, Thomas Kretschmann cast as Baron Strucker in Avengers: Age of Ultron. Uh, this, the Hollywood Reporter has learned that Dra- the Dracula star, Thomas Crutchman, has been cast as a major villain in the upcoming Avengers Age of Ultron, which they say is none other than Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. This site also notes that Crutchman's deal to portray Strucker is, is for multiple films and not solely the Avengers sequel. Strucker was originally rumored to appear in the movie last month, and now it appears he will join the villain Ultron, played by James Spader, in the highly anticipated sequel. It's going to be this movie's version of um, Red Skull because he is the leader of one of the Nazi groups. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, I'm okay with adding the character. I don't know that I care two, two, two shits either way. I'm just excited to see James Spader as Ultron. <laughs> or at least voicing him because the, his voice in Blacklist, he just gets all kinds of gravelly and it'll work. Uh, we're going to jump into a little DC news. Batman vs. Superman is getting pushed back to 2016. If you haven't heard this yet, where the hell have you been? Uh, How do you no! make a plan to start saving? Really? You're going to have to stop with the commercials. I didn't do it this time. Not my fault. I need these daggone commercials. Go away. According to the studio, uh, the release will give the filmmakers... They're the pushback will give the filmmakers time to realize fully their vision given the complex visual nature of their story the decision was made following the shift of the start of production to the second quarter of this year uh there were some rumors that it is also because uh batfleck got injured no where did um, you see that i at yahoo this week or something uh, okay um apparently we're not going to talk about that part uh so, basically, I there's a couple of reasons I think this is happening. I don't think by the time it happens it will be Superman, Batman. I think it will be the Justice League movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think it was due to the injury, and I think it was also due to Gal Gadot having to get bigger to be Wonder Woman. In many ways, more than one. So, a lot of reasons I think it happened. So, yeah. Could Josh Holloway be Aquaman? I don't know who Josh Holloway is. They there was a question you should have said no or I don't know or you know something along those lines who's Josh Holloway no oh my god it is like ad effing central on me today is Josh Holloway uh, man well just one day after Jason Momoa's Batman vs. Superman casting rumor was shot down another unconfirmed story has emerged that Josh Holloway is being strongly considered for an unspecified role in the Bat in the uh, upcoming Man of Steel sequel. There is speculation they might be playing Aquaman, although that has not been confirmed by DC or Warner Brothers. However, with the inclusion of Batman, Ben Affleck, and Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot, it's possible that the studio is setting the table for the long-awaited Justice League movie. It wouldn't be terribly surprising to see Aquaman show up in this adventure for even just a cameo. The problem with the casting is that Josh Holloway seems to be a little too perfect, according to this dude over here, uh, Jason Moore would have been the less con- conventional choice, and that's where this franchise keep- currently keeps landing, delivering one controversial cast member after the other. Um, I mean, this is a very long article. It looked the part, but I don't, I don't know who's going to convincingly do. I'm not sure I know who he is. I'm. I don't. I don't know. Let's move on. He looks the part, but his blonde hair with that really dark. Beard, beard. Was, hey, you have looks, to blonde the beard or something. Looks ridiculous. Um, got some comic book news. We've got a new Justice League series coming out. Justice League Unlimited. No, nope, that's not that what it says. United. You read. I'm apparently can't. Uh, this came from Superhero Hype, and it says last year we got word that the current Justice League of America title being published at DC would become <coughs> Justice League Canada. For a brief stint, 
with writer Jeff Lemire and artist Mike McCone. Now DC has announced that the series no longer will bear that title, but instead will go by the name Justice League United and become its very own ongoing series. Wait, 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 wait. I can imagine Justice League Canada. We gotta help them, eh? Everybody is super nice the whole time. (laughs) And there's maple leaves all over the place. (laughs) Just saying. Uh, uh, this April, we'll see the end of JLA and the birth of JLU in a special zero issue introducing readers to the members of the new team and their primary locations of Canada and outer space. Because when you think Canada, you think outer space. Oh the lineup for the team will include Stargirl, Martian Manhunter, Hawkman, Green Arrow, Animal Man, Supergirl, Adam Strange, and a new woolly Canadian superhero. Holy who Lemire says will be introduced by Canadian legends. Influenced. That's what I said. <laughs> I'm telling you, it needs to be like a Mountie or something. We're going to piss off some people. I know, right? I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. Uh, the Zero Issue will hit in April, so check it out. I might actually check it out. I like some of those characters. Um, But yeah, I... It, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. If the character says A one time, I may pee myself from laughter. So this means you're going to check it out? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I was reading JLA for a while, and it was okay, but obviously not good enough because it's ending. So I'll check out JLU. I got no problems with that. All right. Moving on to uh, Peter Parker is set to return in the Amazing Spider-Man number one in April. Um, personally, I think you said lying. you won't. I'm going to pick this up. I want to know how because I got his last issue and I want his first issue. I think he's lying. Um, let's see here. With Amazing Spider-Man 2 hitting theaters on May 2nd, it makes sense that Peter Parker will return... Um, and it, uh, the article says Slot told star Andrew Garfield that Parker would be returning during a visit to the set last summer. Nice, so Andrew Garfield already knew. Um, I I like I really do like this. I've I've liked them on their run the whole time. I think the spectacular Superior Spider Man was always meant to be a short lived maxi style series than it was meant to be a forever ongoing Mm -hmm. so the fact that they renumbered to start amazing spider-man back at um number one is a little bizarre for me but i think that's what they wanted because they wanted a grand way to bring this back as number one i wouldn't even call this grand literally i've not touched a spider-man book since they started with that doc ock crap a lot of people are loving it no i think it's pure bull hockey. All right. So, I, okay, I'll admit, I may grab the number one Amazing. Okay, I mean, I'm looking at my wall here and I've got Amazing Fantasy poster of Spider-Man. So, I may grab the number one Amazing. For that matter, in years to come, I may end up grabbing a trade of the uh, Superior. Superior. It just, it frustrates me. The only reason I think the Superior is probably going and Amazing is coming back, it's is because, in my opinion, Superior fans like me don't want to read Superior because it's not Peter Parker. I don't know. A lot of people like the difference, you know, like uh, Age of Apocalypse changed everything. I loved that. Some people love the fact when you change things and there are fewer consequences and stuff like that. So. Um, I, I'm, I'm okay with it. Fair enough. Little Star Wars movie news. More Star Wars, uh, seven rumors. Right? I have to remember which one. No- yes. Six, seven. Okay. Scroll that way. There you go. Did I miss it? Uh, just quick casting rumor. Um, so far it looks like people like Jesse Plemons from Breaking Bad, uh, Michael Fassbender, Adam Driver and Hugo Weaving have all been on set as possible candidates for casting. Eh. I'm okay with most of those. 
I'd love to see Hugo Weaving in, in Star Wars, to be honest. I think he'd be a damn good Sith. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, good idea on that one. I don't know who this Weaving kid is, though. That's Weaving. I mean, Driver kid is, though. I don't know who that is, either. Michael Fassbender, I mean, he's... Everywhere. Michael Fassbender. Go for it. Uh, then we got some Boba Fett news for you. Also found on Facebook by Lily Hamilton. The uh, the 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 most useless bounty hunter in the galaxy may be getting his uh, or should be getting his own spinoff movie. It is now in pre-production. The Boba Fett movie, as I said, should... Boba. No, you said what the most useless about... bounty hunter in the galaxy. You never said his name. Oh my God! I think we're lame. We're gonna have commercials. All over this episode. It happened. I really need an ad blocker. Go ahead. Uh, Star Wars fans rejoice. A Boba Fett movie is officially in the works. The Star Wars spinoffs have been rumored for a while, but everyone's favorite bounty hunter, everyone's favorite <gasps> bounty hunter. I know who can play this. Okay, really? so we know he ultimately dies in the end, right? Well, no, this could be after the fact. This would more than likely be after the fact. But okay, continue. What? If we assume it's prior, because Boba Fett dies, yeah. okay, not in the okay, could go totally ahead. be Justin Bieber. Then I could finally see him die. <laughs> you don't like that? I think that makes a great casting. Jeez, you don't uh, want to see see him go down the uh, toothy butthole. The toothy butthole. That's what the I was Sarlacc. Called. It looks like a toothy butthole. Oh, jeez, this show's gone on long enough today. <laughs> All right, um, I'm okay with this either way. I would love to see a bunch of the bounty hunters in that movie because I want to see him take them out. I played the game of his when uh -huh. it came out. It was pretty good. It was a little difficult, but it was pretty good. So um, no other real big details on this uh, other than it's probably going to show, like, it may show Teenage Boba Fett, but it'll probably go... Um, like, like young adult Boba Fett up to when you see him in the normal Star Wars universe. Again, he dies in the end, <sighs> thrown down a prickly butthole. A pr okay, quit there. Okay. <laughs> Next story. <laughs> Sorry. A little bit of TV news. Uh, got the Gotham TV show that we thought would be, um. Uh, the Goth Fox's Gotham TV series to include classic Batman villains. Originally billed as a series focusing on pre-commissioner era uh, James Gordon, uh, Fox chairman Kevin Riley via Deadline confirmed today that the network's upcoming series Gotham will chronicle the journey of a young Bruce Wayne as well saying the show will track Bruce from a child until he puts on a cape in the finale. So we get to see, actually see long stretches of Batman training. Uh, but Riley, that also I'll, means we get to see creations of the villains that they say he created. Right. Riley also announced that the series will tell origin stories for several key Batman villains, including the Riddler, the Penguin, Catwoman, and more. We will see how they get to become what they are as Gotham is teetering on the edge. It is an operatic soap with a larger-than-life quality. So a little bit darker version of Smallville. I'm good with that. Under development from the mentalist creator Bruno Heller... Gotham has already been greenlit as a pilot with veteran director Danny Cannon behind the camera. Riley confirmed that the network has the full intention of taking the show to series and will begin assembling their writer's room this February. Nice. This sounds neat now. Like, I'm excited for it now. I didn't care about the pre-Gordon commissioner thing. It would have been a cop drama. Um, but I actually like this version. Right. I think this would be interesting to see. I agree. I think it'll. I think it'll be cool. Uh, there is a prickly big difference there. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help it. Uh, quick news from Huffington Post because every now and again we gotta go legit. Uh, FX is justified will end after season six, which then I will start watching. Right. Once it's all on Netflix, I will then try and watch it. According, uh, Justified will come to an end after the show's sixth season. According to Hollywood Reporter, FX Network CEO John Landgraf sadly confirms that the news. It was uh, showrunner Graham Yost and Timothy Oliphant's decision. Um, I would have liked to have had more Justified. It's one of my favorite shows. Now, I want to point this out there. If... 
if television television creators are smart, mm-hmm. this is the model they go after. What letting the actors decide when? To no, end it? ending the show before you have to stretch out so much of a story that it just starts sucking, right? Uh, or just starts getting really weird. Breaking Bad did that. You know, like I've never I've watched it, but everything I hear from people that says it it never stopped being a good show. Right. Most of these shows that you see that go eight, nine, ten seasons stop being a good show at some point, and that's are you they... saying that a, a TV show can um, either die the hero or and live and see themselves become the crappy show? Yes. The uh, I. It's the Batman thing. You are weird today. I took some painkillers earlier. <laughs> so, uh, for all you Justified fans, please, you know, cherish what you have left. Amen to that. Uh, what else do we got? NBC orders their Constantine pilot. We talked about this a few months ago, I think. Uh, the series announced as beginning in the scripting stage back in September. So you called that one. Deadline is now reporting that the NBC... Uh, that The NBC... <laughs> WNBC... Uh, has ordered a pilot for Constantine based on the DC Comics and Vertigo character written by written by David S. Goyer. It's thought that the new series will use the character's new 52 series as its basis. So the younger, brasher version of the character. Oh, uh, yeah. This is created by Alan Moore, John Constantine, a roguish magician, detective con man, first appeared during the author's run on Swamp Thing in 1985. Um, I kind of like it. I mean, I'm, I might I'm, check it out. You know, detective style thing. That, might be that one has a point. Uh, we got some Marvel on TV news. Jamie Alexander is uh, set to guest star as Lady Sif on Marvel Agents of Shield. A lot of people felt she should have been Wonder Woman. Well, she already had the at chops for it. Uh, but I don't know. Crossing, you know, the worlds, I guess. Uh, ABC announced today that the Thor and Thor: The Dark World star Jamie Alexander will guest. Uh, on the 15th episode of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So, I'm good with that. Yeah. I agree completely. So, let's see. What do we got next? Uh, we're moving through these a little quick, but it is late. So, I think we... What time is it? 15 after. So, we've already ran past an hour? A little bit, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we're moving through. Uh, Reaper co-creators board Marvel's Agent Carter TV series. What? Whatever. The Deadline is reporting that Reaper co oh it's a show. Co creators Tara Butters and Michelle Fazikas have come aboard Marvel's next TV project, Agent Carter, as writers and executive producers. Due to the intense secrecy on the project, Marvel has not confirmed the story, but ABC will pre- be presenting today at the Television Critics Association. So check back for potential confirmation later. That's cool. So I, I loved her character. Like she was one of the Big reasons I love that movie. Um, and um, you're gonna have to go on with Mount Me for a minute. What? Yeah. Alrighty. I'm going to go solo for a few minutes. Oh, excuse me. It's so unprofessional, I know. <laughs> uh, let's see here. A little bit of get a little bit of video game news. We have. Uh, we told you the numbers of Xbox One last week. Uh, this week, we're, the numbers of the PS4 have passed 4.2 million units sold. Uh, and that's doubled since December. So, that's pretty impressive. I have yet to buy one, nor will I until probably the second series. Like... The second release of it because I, yeah, no, I don't do that because they just break. Uh, let's see here. We have 20, 2014 gaming predictions, top 10 video game predictions for 2014. Uh, number one would be another Crash Bandicoot. Uh, let's see. I need full screen for this. Go full screen. Uh, Metal Go Solid. Ground Zeroes will be panned for short length and will sell well anyway. So short stories for the next Metal Gear Solid stuff. Uh, Virtual reality will require overwhelming developer support following initial impressions. The Oculus Rift, which they they did at E3 along with 
this thing that they had was like a treadmill that was you know frictionless on your feet and held you in place that looked really cool i'm super excited for vr uh steambox will drive hard competition in the console area arena i agree i think steam's uh, personal console is going to blow away some of my uh, xbox and the playstation people uh let's see here elder scrolls online is going will probably be a huge loss this year that's probably going to happen people aren't coming off of world of warcraft for that uh the order of the order 1866 halo 5 uncharted 4 and quantum break are targeted releases for 2015 that doesn't make sense in this pro in this segment but whatevs uh titanfall will spur xbox one sales uh, if I choose one game that had the most potential in 2014, it would be Titanfall. Everything shown up to this point has been spectacular from its fast-paced gameplay to its mech system. I've got to admit, I love mech games, so I would play that if I had an Xbox One. Uh, Nintendo will debut a Wii U bundle that ditches the gamepad. Uh, the Wii U is in trouble, and a lot of that has to do with its price. It's hard to compete with something like the PS4 when you're only $100 cheaper and a dozen times less powerful. In an effort to be to bring more affordability to the device, I expect Nintendo to drop the gamepad and replace it with a Wii U Pro in a new bundle. Uh, at first, it'll be experimental, but once Nintendo sees how well a, a $199 Wii U can sell, there will be no return. So they'll switch it from the big thick gamepad to an xbox style control pretty much which makes a lot of sense and uh, rpgs will be plentiful and successful i don't think there are any other games out there other than rpgs anymore that are really successful so uh microsoft will increase value of xbox live gold to combat psn success there's no way around it. xbox live isn't as dominant as it once was while its feature set and polish uh, is still at the top of the totem pole, the value isn't. PS Plus has evolved from a supplemental subscription service to something that gives gamers a reason to buy a PlayStation console. Microsoft needs to begin uh, offering more frequent free games to keep up with the PS Plus. In addition, the paywalls for things like Netflix needs to be dropped. Yeah. I agree with all of that. Um, let's see, what else we got? I'm drowning here. I couldn't see any of the chat because I had to go full screen. Sorry, guys. Hey, someone from Greece. Hello. Cool. Uh, let's see here. A little bit of other news. Um, we have a link from fourletternerd.com talking about the documentary which discusses the long lost fantastic four movie so i've seen trailers and bits and pieces from this old very old i think it's 20 plus years at this point uh fantastic four movie that never got put out like it never got finished um but four letter nerd is uh is a group of guys that has put out it's a very good website they put out a lot of content and um, I really like their article on it, but they also give a lot of the, um, they also give several videos and links that you guys can go to. So check out that story. Um, let's see here. And the last story found by Lily Hamilton is, uh, Yahoo games says that Twitch is bigger, uh, bigger Hulu and Twitch game stream. And blah, hang on, let's read the story. I read the story, but I can't remember the story. Uh, game video streaming service Twitch reveals its massive audience. Uh, the only thing gamers like to do more than play games is watch other players play them. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm trying to look for a number. Initially launched as a spinoff to streaming site Justin TV in 2011. Uh, Twi since then, Twitch has raised over $40 million dollars. And good lord! Uh, on two on Thursday, last Thursday, Twitch announced that by the end of 2013, over 45 million 
monthly unique viewers were watching an average of 106 minutes per day or 12 billion minutes per month. Holy crap. That is some numbers. To put the company's success into perspective, Twitch is enjoying more primetime eyeballs than MTV, Sci-Fi, AMC, and TNT. Crucially, over 75% of its audience uh, is between 18 and 49. That's a big between. Um, but, I mean, let's face it. You guys are you know, watching live on Twitch when you can. And this is recorded on Twitch. So, yeah. But, dang. Those dudes are rolling. And that is it for the stories. Thank you for this with me. Uh,